Hey, Banger fans, welcome to Overkill Unearthed, Banger show where we look back at records we wish we could have reviewed, but couldn't because they were under the radar, or we weren't reviewing things then, or we were a weird nerd that no one wanted to hear from at that point in our lives. You know, mostly the last one every time. As always, we have a Patreon campaign, uh, and we have a YouTube channel, which you probably know because you're on the YouTube channel. But if you like the YouTube channel, maybe consider supporting us on the Patreon campaign, or maybe just support us on the YouTube channel with a subscribe, or a like, or a comment, or you know, whatever. I'll take best bands of all time for 1,000, Alex. Yes, that's right. I'm finally talking about, in formal fashion, Bolt Thrower's The Fourth Crusade. Uh, it came out in October 1992 on Earache Records, and uh, oh boy, what a special time. So this album, when it came out, was a, a fairly big deal because it marked the first kind of large stylistic shift that Bolt Thrower went under, and it was sort of a graduation into kind of a full-fledged band less influenced by the scene and more influencing the scene, I think. Um, I still remember my first experience with the record as a uh, weird teenager working in a comic book store and playing Warhammer. Uh, the name Bolt Thrower was always bandied about as like, oh, did you know there's like a Warhammer death metal band? Whoa, that's crazy. Um, and it kind of sounds like a gimmick, a British death metal band uh, with entirely Warhammer themed, named after a Warhammer weapon, advertising in White Dwarf magazine. Um, it really seems like this is a jokey gimmick band, but you listen to it and it is absolutely in no way a gimmick like at all. Um, I remember the first time I listened to it, I was like, I, this is too cool for me. I don't know how to listen to this yet. I don't understand this yet. I didn't think it was bad. I was like, I need to figure out how to like this music. And it kind of started me on a quest to figure out how to like that. Um, and now, hey, I love it. Um, you know, there's a variety of what these Overkill on Earth are about. Sometimes it'll be a uh, introspective look at an album. Sometimes it'll be a fun, silly romp. And sometimes it'll just be uh, gushing about an album because you listen to it pretty much every week still anyways. So there's not really that much of a need to look back on it. And you just want to tell people about it. Because for some reason, when I mention it on the channel still, sometimes people are like, what's the best Bolt Thrower album? What Bolt Thrower album should I start with? I've never listened to Bolt Thrower, which is crazy. Let's do it. I mean, let's just start by saying the intro to the title track is the most perfect intro ever. It's just such a fantastically listenable riff. It's so compelling. It immediately draws you in. It's so much menace with so little happening. It's crazy. It's that guy sitting at the bar that doesn't get angry, doesn't get mad, but you know he is absolutely not to be flexed with because he's just terrifying for some reason. Um, that's what they create from the moment you press play on this. It's so good. It's iconic. It's fantastic. Everybody talks about it when they hear it. If you haven't heard it, you absolutely need to hear it. The whole record is just a master class on how to make a perfect, fantastic, heavy, brutal, amazing death metal record uh, with any tools you want. You don't need to be totally blazing fast all the time. You can create that exact same atmosphere in so many different ways. Uh, As the World Burns is a complete crawl, but it's a complete crawl through mud as artillery shells are exploding over your head. The whole old school death metal revival scene that's going on right now. People joke around, oh, I've already heard Morbid Angel, blah, blah, blah. This is the record they're all trying to make every day, all the time. Prophecy. 
So while some of the earlier records will be cited by people and said they're their most favorite and they love them, I really think the Fourth Crusade is the band putting their best and most personal foot forward. And that foot is, of course, made of Gavin Ward and Barry Thompson's riffs. Where Next to Conquer uh, has another great opener that almost rivals the Fourth Crusade, but then it leads into another great riff, and then after that riff, it doubles time and leads into another great riff. Uh, just because it's a slower record doesn't mean uh, it's a slow record. I've said slow a lot, but there's speed in here, and it's awesome. Uh, it's really, though, just a pizza buffet of riffs. If you're a riff guy, they weave in and out and so well, the solos will come out of the riffs. It's just really, uh, it's just, uh, take a deep breath. It's really a record where you don't need to figure out if you like each song. Each song starts, and it starts in a unique and great way, and you're like, oh boy, I can't wait to see what this does. Uh, Spearhead starts with Andrew Whale playing drums like a platoon marching up a hill, and then uh, Carl Willett's hoarse vocals screaming Spearhead coming in. There's a, there's a crackle to it. It's just, it's so there and real, and ah, I'm just getting too excited. Thrower even gets a little deep, a little mature, you know, for a band called Bolt Thrower at the very end with uh, finding a nice little mid-tempo groove to sit in while Carl just basically lists wars and why they're a bummer over top of it. And it's a long record, especially by Bolt Thrower standards. Uh, it's the only time they ever run north of 50 minutes in their career, and uh, boy, does it not feel like that. The repetition of the riffs doesn't get repetitive because they're just so good that you wind up sitting in them and being like, ah, and you kind of wind up in a bit of a trance. And then by the time the song's over, you're like, ah, that song was over. Oh, what's happening next? Oh, yeah. It's a 50-minute record that I still listen to all the time, which any time a record of that length can stay in the rotation, it's always like, this is really, 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 really good. Part of that is also the production. I mean, it's really that perfect sweet spot of making a record sound like music being played. It doesn't sound overly done. It doesn't sound like it's made to be overly crappy either. It's just a, a warm, real sounding record. And uh, Earache released a, a high dynamic range vinyl pressing again. Uh, so if you, if you pick that up, you can enjoy it in all its fantastic glory. But everything has its flaws. So the worst part is uh, the price of Bolt Thrower merch on eBay. That's it, it's perfect, shut up. This is really just the best. It's the best record. It's such a great record. And I can't even really put it into words very well. Uh, you know, I'm just fumbling over myself because I'm just excited. And I just, everything that I say about it is just, I really like the way this sounds. And then I like the way this sounds. And then this sounds good. Because that's ultimately the story here is everything just sounds really good. It's just something you just have to put on someone else's head and be like, listen to how good this riff is. And you're listening at home and then you're like, I gotta fucking pick up the needle and put it down and try and find where that riff is again because I'm not waiting to hear it again. I gotta hear it right now. It really just, somehow they figured out a way to just make everything sound amazing. And please, if you haven't listened to it, listen to it. Listen to it. Listen to it. All the skulls out of five for the Skull Throne. Whatever, however, the max, just piles, piles of skulls. So hey, thanks for coming with me on me just gushing about an album I love. Uh, if you'd like another album uh, like this that you might love, that you might not have heard, uh, 1914 uh, released The Blind, Leading the Blind in 2018. They're out of Ukraine and uh, it's, uh, it's another kind of, hey, this is a, slower bummer death metal album about war but not in the way that war is cool and sick it's like boy <laughs> what a bummer that war is Whew. um yeah just a great record uh flew a little under the radar uh i talked about it a little bit but i didn't have metal monthly yet and man that was a metal monthly pick just waiting to happen so hey thanks for doing this with us we're having fun with this show uh, i hope you like it and uh you know just subscribe, like, comment, blah, blah, blah. Mortified by the lack of conscience. Us
sanctity There's no relevance 